Great Farming Migration Hoax. Introduction. For half a century, archaeology has leaned on a comforting narrative. Agriculture was invented in the Middle East, and then slowly marched across Europe, arriving in Britain and Ireland around 4000 BCE. This tidy model, neat arrows on a map, farmers trudging steadily northwest, has been taught as fact. Yet it was always based on thin evidence, midpoint Bayesian models, pottery typologies, and assumptions rather than hard data. Today, however, we have something the 20th century archaeologists did not, a data set of 14,000 calibrated radiocarbon dates drawn from Mesolithic and Neolithic contexts across the continent. When viewed spatially and temporally, the story they tell is radically different and devastating for the orthodox farmer diffusion model. What the time lapse reveals, uh, using the Google Earth KML time slider, we modelled activity from 8,500 BCE to 2,500 BCE. Binned into 500 year intervals, the pattern is unmistakable. Northwest Europe lights up earliest and densest. From 8,000 BCE onwards, Britain, Ireland, Brittany and Scandinavia produce clusters of Mesolithic radiocarbon dates far richer than anything seen in the southeast entry corridors. The southeast is sparse. If agriculture truly spread stepwise from Anatolia, we would expect dense early activity in Greece, the Balkans and Italy fading as it moves northwest. Instead, we see the reverse gradient. Uh, maritime corridors dominate. The densest concentrations occur on coasts, estuaries and rivers, the very places where moorings, quarries and early monuments are found. The pattern matches boat-based trade routes, not overland migrations. In other words, the radiocarbon record aligns with an Atlantic seafaring civilization, not a Middle Eastern agricultural wave. The mathematical split NW versus SE. To test this more rigorously, we drew a 45 degree line across Europe from 30N 0E to 55N 30E, dividing the continent into NW and SE halves. We then tallied radiocarbon dates per half in 500 year bins. The results were clear. Even in the deep Mesolithic 8500 to 7500 BCE, NW Europe already dominates about 83%. By the so-called Neolithic Revolution, 5000 to 3500 BCE, NW counts reach over 90% of the data set. At no point do SE dates approach parity with NW. If a farmer wave marched from Anatolia into Europe, the ratio should invert. Instead, the numbers show the opposite. NW Europe was already a core zone of activity while the southeast lagged. Heat map timeline. To make this visible, we produced 11 heat maps, each covering a 500 year slice from 8500 BCE to 2500 BCE. Every dot is a dated site. Brighter clusters mark intense activity. Beneath each frame are the counts of sites on the northwest and southeast sides of a 45 degree split line, with the northwest percentage shown in bold. 8500 to 8000 BCE and double 24 SE equal 5, 82.8% NW. The very beginning, activity already concentrated in NW Europe. 8000 to 7500 BCE. NW equals 347, SE equals 70, 83.2% NW. Clusters appear in Britain, Ireland and Scandinavia. The SC remains dim. 7500 to 7000 BCE. NW equals 513, SE 64, 87.5% NW. Doggerland and Atlantic coasts dominate. The inland farmer corridor shows little sign of life. 7000 to 6500 BCE. NW equals 1054, SE equals 112. 90.4% NW. Monumental centres in Ireland and Brittany appear. Maritime connections intensify. 6500 to 6300328 C equal 172, 93.1% NW. The NW explodes with dense occupation. The SE corridor barely registers. 
6000 to 5500 BCE, NW equals 3098, SE equals 272, 91.9% NW. By this point, the Neolithic revolution should be sweeping from the SE. Instead, the reverse gradient persists. 5500 to 5000 BCE, NW equals 3705, SE even 91. 92.7% NW. Atlantic facade societies are thriving. Trade and monument construction spread along waterways. 5000 to 4500 BCE. NW equals 3060. SE equals 207. 93.7% NW. Britain, Ireland, Brittany, Orkney, now the brightest hotspots in all of Europe. 4500 to 4000 BCE. W equals 2450, S equal 198, 92.5% NW. Traditional textbooks mark this as the arrival of farming. The radiocarbon record shows NW societies were already long established. 4000 to 3500 BCE. NW equals 2100, SE equals 180. 92.1% NW, Caramore, Noth and Orkney flourish part of an Atlantic-wide monument network. 3500 to 3000 BCE, NW equals 1700, SE equals 160, 91.4% NW. The NW remains dominant right through to the classic Neolithic horizon. The farmer diffusion story collapses across all bins. NW Europe consistently holds 85 to 94% of activity. The southeast never rises above 17%. If civilization was spreading from Anatolia, the early density would be in the SE. Instead, the gradient is reversed. Why the orthodoxy failed? Why did the Overland diffusion model persist so long, despite cracks in the evidence? Several reasons stand out. Dating limitations. Radiocarbon plateaus, e.g. around 8000 BCE and 2400 BCE, blur sequences let in midpoints masquerade as precision. Contamination choices. Charcoal and reused wood skewed some chronologies in favour of neat overland stories. Narrative inertia. Training and peer review reward conformity. Challenges get labelled pseudoscience until the data mountain is too big to ignore. Textbook simplification. Arrow diagrams of farmer spread became common sense rather than a hypothesis. This is why Anomaly's early Stonehenge canals mislabeled as Saxon imported wheat at Boldenor Cliff long before local farming were sidelined, not integrated. Case study, the diffusion null model, math and map. To be academically fair, let's model what the record should look like under the orthodox demic diffusion hypothesis first formalised by Ammerman and cavalli Sforza in 1971 and developed through the 1980s and 1990s. This model treats farming spread as a wave of advance in which small founder groups migrate outward and grow logistically, leaving behind expanding farming frontiers. 1. Wave speed and arrival time. Ammerman and cavalli Sforza calculated a characteristic front speed of approximately one kilometre per year later supported by archaeological synthesis, for example, Pinassi et al. Distance Anatolia, southern Britain, approximately 3,000 kilometres. At one kilometre per year, farmers would take approximately 3,000 years to arrive. If Britain is farmed by 4,000 BCE, then migration must begin in Anatolia by 7,000 BCE. Two seeding Britain with about 5,000 farmers by 4,000 BCE. Demographic models suggest that to establish farming, at least 5,000 individuals are needed as a founding population in Britain by 4,000 BCE, with a modest growth rate of about 1.3% per year, 100 settlers arriving by 4,300 BCE could, in theory, grow to 5,000 by 4,000 BCE. But for 100 to reach Britain after 3,000 kilometres of staged settlement, the Anatolian stream must be much larger. If half settle every 500 kilometres, survivors equal 3%, requiring about 3,200 to launch. 
If two thirds settle every 500 kilometers, survivors equal 0.4%, requiring about 27,000 to launch. This implies thick settlement trails across the Balkans, Italy and France, which should appear as dense SE radiocarbon clusters. Three, expected radiocarbon gradient. The diffusion model predicts 8,500 to 7,000 BC SE blazing NW near zero. 7,000 to 5,500 BCE SE strong. Central Europe rising NW weak 5,500 to 4,500 BCE. Central and Western Europe dominant NW still minor 4,500 to 3,500 BCE. NW finally catches up but only approaches parity with SE. Visualising the expected pattern. We've generated a set of 11 heat maps using these diffusion assumptions. They show the SE blazing first, with the NW slowly catching up, but never dominating. By contrast, the observed data set, hence et al, 2022, shows the NW at 83 to 94% dominance across all bins. This is a 180 degree inversion of the orthodox diffusion. Case study, Einkorn wheat at Boldnor Cliff. In 2015, archaeologists made a discovery that should have rewritten European prehistory overnight. While diving off the Isle of Wight at a site known as Boldnor Cliff, they recovered DNA from Einkorn wheat in 8,000 year old sediments, around 6,000 BCE. This was not cultivated locally. Britain did not adopt farming for another two millennia. Instead, it proves contact with regions where einkorn was already domesticated, the Mediterranean or Anatolia. Mainstream archaeology tried to explain it away as contamination or a one-off anomaly, but when set against the radiocarbon dataset, the implications are clear. Trade before farming. The people of Mesolithic Britain knew about cereals and imported them long before they grew them. Maritime networks. The only plausible route for einkorn to reach southern Britain in 6000 BCE is by sea, across the Bay of Biscay and along Atlantic seaways. Complex societies. To organise long-distance cereal trade, societies must have had surplus production, exchange mechanisms and seafaring technologies, all the hallmarks of civilization. The Boldnor Cliff wheat fits perfectly into the pattern revealed by 14,000 radiocarbon dates. NW Europe was not passively waiting for farmers to arrive, but was already part of a maritime civilization trading goods, ideas and technologies thousands of years before the Neolithic package supposedly spread. In other words, wheat didn't arrive in Britain with farmers trudging overland. It arrived on boats. Implications for Britain and Ireland. The dataset's NW dominance is not just a statistical curiosity, it has direct consequences for how we understand the origins of Britain and Ireland's monumental tradition. If the densest early activity lies here, then several long-standing anomalies suddenly fall into place. 1. Stonehenge, Phase 1, circa 8300 BCE. The ditch and Aubrey holes, thousands of years older than the textbook Neolithic Arrival, Align perfectly with the early NW concentration of Mesolithic sites. Britain was not an empty backwater waiting for farmers. It was already home to complex societies capable of large-scale engineering. Stonehenge Phase 1, far from being a puzzle piece that does not fit, is revealed as part of a thriving Mesolithic tradition. 2. Canals and dikes LIDAR mapping demonstrates that features like Car Dyke and Wands Dyke were engineered waterways, not Saxon or Roman defensive ditches. Such monumental canal construction only makes sense in a society that lived on and by the water. The radiocarbon evidence shows that Northwest Europe had dense, long lived communities precisely when such projects would have been possible. A floodplain civilization required canals just as much as it required monuments. 3. Doggerland and the Raised Rivers The early NW concentration coincides with Doggerland and the Great Raised River systems left by post-glacial flooding. 
These landscapes offered fertile estuaries, abundant fisheries and natural highways. Communities flourished here, moving by boat, trading goods and building monuments at harbours and river mouths. The radiocarbon density proves that these were not isolated foragers, but interconnected settlements. 4. The Atlantic Monument Network sites such as Carramore in Ireland, approximately 6,500 BCE, North, approximately 6,800 BCE, Orkney and Brittany all sit within this northwest heartland. Their shared placement on coasts and estuaries shows they were part of a maritime corridor. Far from being derivative of Middle Eastern farmers, these sites reflect an indigenous Atlantic tradition of boat builders and stone setters. Why a maritime civilization must be acknowledged without accepting a maritime framework, the evidence remains a jumble of anomalies. Why are monuments always near coasts? Why do dikes follow paleo channels? Why does imported wheat appear at Boldner Cliff millennia before farming is adopted locally? Why do radiocarbon clusters appear in Northwest Europe long before Anatolian farmers supposedly arrived? The only coherent answer is that Northwest Europe hosted a maritime civilization, seafaring, trading, and monument building long before the plough reached its shores. Why it matters. Textbooks are obsolete. Bayesian midpoint models and diffusion myths cannot compete with 14,000 hard C14 data points. Methodology must evolve. Hydrological calibration, aligning sites with post-glacial river levels, offers a more reliable chronology. Archaeology must confront bias. As with Galileo or Wegener, resistance to paradigm shifts stems from professional inertia, not scientific rigour. Conclusion. The evidence of 14,000 radiocarbon dates cannot be ignored. NW Europe was a Mesolithic civilization zone, not a backwater waiting for farmers. Monumental construction, trade and seafaring emerged along Atlantic waterways millennia before 4000 BCE. The stones didn't walk. They sailed. History will not be rewritten by consensus but by evidence and the radiocarbon record has spoken. Thank you.